Surf's up, it's Maui Snake, and we're going to be looking at the Blast Premier Spring Final 2023 in Washington, D.C. I pledge allegiance to the flag, and I won't pick an American team to win the event. Okay, here we go. We're going to be looking at the outright odds first, and of course, this is powered by Pinnacle. This is looking at their odds. Be sure to follow the link below to look at their esports hub and see if you want to actually just check out the odds or perhaps place a bet. This is not betting advice, as I don't bet. Once again, I am here because I am in partnership with Pinnacle. I can't bet. I work on these events. But we're going to go through these teams one by one and look at their odds. We're going to start with the lowest ranked team, according to Pinnacle. That's going to be Imperial with 42x odds to try to win the event. I'll just be real. I don't need to explain this very much. People are trying to poach Fallen already. I think Bolts might even go somewhere too. And I think this team might dissolve. So this is kind of a last little hurrah. And it's actually like, for a team that's known for being the last dance, this actually kind of is their last dance because I think Fallen is almost surely out because there's so much interest in so many different camps for this guy. But I do not see them doing any damage. I'd be pretty impressed if they even won a map given that they're in Group A and they're going to play the loser of G2 Cloud9. And I just think that both of those teams are incredibly competitive. Unless Cloud9 has a mental breakdown, I don't see Imperial winning anything at this event whatsoever. Next up, we have Complexity, who are standing in for Navi. They were a single round away from taking down Navi at the Spring Groups, so they were given the spot. I think maybe there were some other reasons too, maybe Blast Points, but I know that it was, and to me, it actually kind of made sense, even though you might, might have thought maybe this should be Liquid, but again, they're playing with a stand-in, and Sonic, despite his admirable efforts in Dallas. He was actually playing fantastically. This team still has a long way to go. They are kind of happy with where they are in some respects. I think I could kind of sense that there might be something that changes with this team eventually, but I think that these guys are still more or less in this on the same page that they're just competitively grinding. They're actually convincingly the second best team in North America behind Liquid, and I think that that in some ways keeps them pretty happy because they're going to probably just keep qualifying for RMRs, making it to majors, uh, doing a little bit of damage when they go overseas. And they actually put up pretty good fights against European teams. But with their first match against Heroic, I feel like it's pretty unlikely they're going to win that. And then loser, Phase Astralis, I just don't see if Complexity are going to really do any serious damage at this one. Maybe they could beat Astralis, but I don't see if Phase lose their opener, then that's a little bit weird. But okay, next one, we have Astralis. And yeah... I think this is actually probably an, a slightly undervalued Astralis. It's just that they, because their opener is versus phase, it's going to be quite hard. But I, w I really liked what I saw from Astralis at IEM Dallas. Um, they do seem like they're trending slightly upwards. I don't know if I can say safely, though, that they're trending upwards enough to take down phase in an opening BO3. But I would say that they probably actually take down complexity in that following matchup, which would then secure them a playoff spot. And that should be good enough to then play, let's say it's like a Cloud9, maybe a G2. Like, that's not unwinnable, but it's just that it's so hard to imagine them beating FaZe, Vitality, and G2, and Heroic if they have to, once it actually hits the real playoff bracket. So, yeah, that's that. Cloud9, 7x odds. I just don't think anybody has a strong read of this team. Uh, I just think their style has proven to be so ineffective at this point that you can they can beat some teams if they just don't prep for them. Like if if Twist didn't bolt pull out the double op against them, who knows if the series is a little bit different when they played them in Dallas. But I also think that Cloud9 is so hard stuck in their ways that are just simply behind the meta because I think the heroic meta was made to actually counter the Cloud9 meta, just being so much more active and trying to find and pick off those individual lurkers. Because Cloud9 kind of just sent out like a bunch of, almost everybody's lurking and everybody's just taking individual duels. So if you're heroic and you just play a trade style game that is supported by flashes, you're going to find those guys, you're going to take them down. And it's not like Cloud9 can join up fast enough to actually exploit whatever uh, moves you made across the map. So yeah, I just think Cloud9 style is a bit outdated, even though they obviously have some very strong players. 7X seems kind of where they should be because, you know, they can just pop off and just start destroying teams. And a team like G2, I almost feel like they're not going to anti-strat them well enough, but we're going to talk about that more later. But we got phase next, 6.53. Losing to the eventual champions of I Am Dallas in ENS. And in some way, I think actually FaZe has a good chance of winning this event. I think that it, they've shown that their map pool is a little bit weak, though. Like, they probably shouldn't beat anybody on Ancient. 
or not ancient, Anubis at this event. They definitely can beat anybody on Anubis at this event um, as they beat G2 in the playoffs. And uh, yeah, I think this is a team that, to me, almost comes across as undervalued because look at who's above them. We have G2 with 5.38 odds. And I actually think FaZe has a better chance of winning this event than G2. So that's really strange to me. And uh, I kind of, this is a one where I really just don't agree with what Pinnacle did here. Like I would I would have given FaZe better odds based off of recent form. Then we have Heroic, who were the favorites to win IM Dallas. They lost to Maus in the semifinals. And I think at this point, we are all painfully aware that what Heroic is doing is very good. It's just that they don't always keep up all the protocols and procedures when they hit big moments. And I think that this is a great event for them to win also because they'll just like it feels weird but it's just having seen the stage now having seen the amount of people that are going to be in this venue it's about let's just say a thousand people it's considerably smaller than dallas and they're they're you're actually close pretty close to the audience if you're a player but i also think you know maybe they just settle in a little bit more maybe they're a little bit more comfortable so i think that they're also kind of in a way a good bet to win this event i feel like they could easily do it it's just their style's good they're they're battle tested they're hungry they want to win a trophy uh they won the last fall finals and that you know again like the blast circuit in some way is treating them pretty well but i i i can see why you you would have your doubts but i think a Four four x bet on heroic is not the worst idea. Um, not betting advice, but betting advice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here here are the favorites to win the event. Vitality two point seven one x odds, and this is where I think this is like you would think that they would just carry the form from the major. And given that they had a break, they probably even could relax a little bit. Um, they they actually I think that they've said on record at this point that they did take time off um so they took a few a handful of days off and then they got back into practicing a little bit but I actually think that's like really good I, I think I don't think it's really good to just go event to event to event to event and sometimes taking a little bit of time off can actually just reinvigorate you so another another team that's a very heavy favorite to win this one major forum said that already but also um I think I think if I had to pick the three teams I would probably skip G2 of these ones that pinnacle put and I would look at Vitality, I'd look at Heroic, Skip G2, and FaZe. I think those are my my big three at this one for sure. And uh, I think the group stage might tell us something as we move forward in this one, but let's get into some matchups that I'm actually really interested in. So this is the first one that I think could really go either way. I just feel like Cloud9 are a team that they're so set in their style, they're so stuck in their ways, and G2 have, I mean, Hooksy has just had the worst body language ever at Dallas, and I think it's like, it's almost like he's having a really hard time either just interpersonal dynamics on the team or just feeling comfortable in himself. And I think that he is actually he's actually kind of maybe letting the social media and the stress of being on a team like G2 really press down on him because of the failure that was the major and then the disappointment that was also Dallas losing to a phase that is kind of just running off of fumes. And so I actually think Cloud9 could definitely win this one. That's why I wanted to highlight this one. 2.33x odds for Cloud9. I think it's incredibly possible they do it. And in a match like this, if you really think it's 50-50, which I think this one is, I think that there's no reason that this sh these odds just shouldn't be closer. Um, just I just haven't liked G2's form. Even though Cloud9 got obliterated by FaZe in Dallas, I just... I, I believe... I actually believe in them more right now. Even though I obviously am a huge, huge critic of uh, Naphne's calling style and what Groove and him created. Other opening matchup that I think is a little spicier. I think these odds might be a little too weak to take Astralis, but I still am just of the opinion to that you should be looking at teams that are trending upwards and have a lot to fight for. And Astralis are that team right now. Device is in exceptional form. I think he ended with a, over a 1.4 rating at Dallas, and he was easily the, the best player there. He was hard carrying Astralis in so many games. Blame F, to me, looked like he was getting anti stratted by a couple of the teams that were coming into Dallas, like Enz, for example. And because of that, he didn't do as much as he could have at that event. And FaZe is a team that's not preparing very much. And if you have a, a player who was mitigate his uh, his uh, output was mitigated because teams were anti-stratting him in Blame F. FaZe has publicly went on record and said, we're not anti-stratting. We're not really practicing. Like, they're saying they're putting in like 50%, if even that, of prep going into the last events of the play uh, before the player break. So I think that this is a game where Astralis could really win it. I think when you just look at the names on paper, it's hard to imagine Buzz and Altex beating FaZe. But if you kind of just strip that away and look at some of the other narratives that are developing with this one and just overall the style, 
style that Astralis plays, which is actually rounding out very nicely. And the fact that Altex is looking like a very serviceable player, I think there's actually a real shot that Astralis could win this one. I would have liked this bet a lot more if it were like Astralis 2.8 or 2.9, but with 2.3, there's some hesitate. There would be some hesitation for me, but I think that it's just totally possible. So. That's it, guys. Looked at it, just a couple first-round matchups. Kind of showed you guys, again, the outright odds. We got a lay of the land for how this tournament may progress. Uh, once want to say thanks again to everybody that came up to me in Dallas and said hi and everything. And if you are in D.C., be sure to say hi. I'm, I don't bite. Uh, I just have hot takes. Uh, and as always, being toxic is a choice. <laughs>